good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Name Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into one of my favorite things about Royal Rumble season, right? We got the Royal Rumble coming up on this Sunday. I'm sure we're going to have more announcements about the Royal Rumble tonight on Friday Night SmackDown at the time of recording. This is earlier on the afternoon of Friday before Friday Night SmackDown. So getting into it, guys, this Sunday is Royal Rumble time. It's my favorite pay-per-view of the year. I just love the spectacle of it. I love the competitive nature of it. The, you know, the winner gets a chance at WrestleMania. Mania. I just love all the elements about it. It's always been my favorite. You got the money in the bank. You got the Elimination Chamber also. Those are two of my favorites as well. But the Royal Rumble, man. The freaking Royal Rumble. The best thing about the Royal Rumble is what? The surprise entrance. The surprises at the Royal Rumble. I know there won't be a crowd. If there is a crowd, it will be very minuscule at best. God, I miss crowds. But anyways, guys, getting into it. Surprise entrance are what make the Royal Rumble so great. You're sitting there and you're like, damn, Brad, who's going to be the next and then it's just life life changing moments that happen. Like last year with Edge returning at the Royal Rumble. I had him as a surprise entry in this video. And then Monday Night Raw, WWE comes out and says, yeah, Edge is in the Rumble. Yeah, that's it. I guess they didn't want to take away from last year's return. But Christ, man, let's just ruin the surprise for everyone. Could have been a surprise entry. They decided not to do it. But today, guys, I got, I don't know how many I'm going to show you. I, I know I got some for the Women's Royal Rumble. And then I got like 10 plus for the Men's Royal Rumble. Now, I know for a fact. Before we get started, I know not all of them are going to come in, guys. These are just some to keep on your radar, to keep in the back of your brain that could potentially show up. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into our 10 potential surprise entrance. I got a couple surprises as well, and we do have some women's ones, but let's go ahead and dive in, guys. Starting out first, I'm going to start out with the men's. Again, not all of these are going to happen. I'm just kind of giving you my own personal thoughts and opinions on it and, you know, how cool it would be and how I'd mark out and all that stuff. But starting out, guys, we got my man Finn Balor. I think Finn Balor being NXT champion. They want to fill out some more spots. At the time of recording, there's only 17 men announced. I'm sure like three or four more will probably be announced on SmackDown, but Finn Balor is on there. I'm a huge Finn Balor guy. Probably one of my favorite wrestlers just in the entire world, so Finn Balor would be incredible. I'd love to see my boy represented there. How cool would it be to see an NXT talent win the Royal Rumble and then go on? I'm still waiting on that storyline. Don't think it'll happen this year, but I think anything's possible because I think this is the most unpredictable Rumble we've seen in a minute. Moving forward, guys, this one's a little bit off the wall, but I'm going to be going with Jason Jordan. Now, I've heard a bunch of rumors saying that Jason Jordan apparently has been medically cleared. He's been working on getting back in the ring, and I think it'd be a really cool moment to see Jason Jordan return at the Royal Rumble. And obviously, he probably wouldn't win it, but it'd be a cool moment nonetheless to see him return. Even though it'd be better with a crowd and everything, I still think that Jason Jordan returning would be cool, and I hope that he can get back in the ring because I know he misses it, and I don't like to see anybody's career sideline due to injury. So let's move on, guys. Speaking of injuries, we're getting into our next entrant, Gender Football Mahal, coming out at the Royal Rumble. I could totally see it. You know, he, he was on the shelf for a while, right? He was on the shelf, and then he came back, and now he's back on the shelf again after doing something else. So will he return at the Rumble? We'll have to see, but I could totally see it taking place. I could definitely see it happening. Next up, guys, is one that I think would be really freaking cool, and that is going to be Samoa Joe. Uh, my boy, Nick. Nate actually had a really cool fantasy booking idea where, you know, the buzzer goes off, the music plays, and Samoa Joe just stands up from commentary, takes off his headset, and says, F this, Brad, I'm going to WrestleMania, and he gets in the ring and kicks some ass and eliminates some people. That would be a really cool return moment for Samoa Joe. I hope that he's a surprise entry. I really miss him. I think that he, he had a concussion or something that sidelined him for so long, but uh, Samoa Joe is one of those guys that I'd really, really love to see. I like Joe a lot. I'd really like to see him back in the ring. I, I think he's a great comment commentator, but damn. Samoa Joe, get your ass back in the ring, Brad. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have another one that I think is definitely possible. Up next, guys, we're talking about a guy who also has been recently injured. I think it was like back in October or something like that, but is the other half of the Usos, Jimmy Uso. How cool would it be to see him return at the Royal Rumble? I know he's been off for a while. I'm sure that he would eventually join the bloodline. You could have some more storyline right there. Haven't seen him in a minute. I think it could tie in potentially to another storyline that we'll get into, but Jimmy Uso is a guy that I could definitely see returning at the Rumble, and I would like to see it. Moving forward, guys, we got a couple retired talents, but I think they could definitely possibly show up if you if you pay attention to some rumors and some writing and stuff like that. The first one is going, I don't know why this is in my brain, but I'm going with Booker T. I, I don't know what it is. I've read some things here and there. Apparently, he's been back in the ring. He's been getting in shape, and apparently, he wants to, like, come back and pretend. I heard, like, a little rumor about him possibly joining the Hurt Business or something. I don't know how true that is. 
I, I, you know, I don't make the rules, Brad. I just break them. I'm just, a, I'm just a messenger. But I could see B Booker T potentially being a return entrant, a surprise entrant in this year's Royal Rumble. To go along with that, Brad, we have Christian. Now, you guys know the Edge has returned. I heard that they potentially, after everything blows over, they could see Christian joining the tag team division with Edge or something on Monday Night Raw. Again, I don't know. It's, it's probably completely laughable. But I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to make this known. I wanted to put this in the video just in case. But Christian and Booker. T could be now. It's potential. It's not. It's not. It's not hardcore fact. It's not written in stone, but it's potential. Next up, guys, we have another former WWE talent that I think just recently left another company, and that is Rob Van Dam, RVD, potentially coming back to WWE. Now I know he's in, up in his older age. I love Rob Van Dam. Probably one of my favorite talents of all time. Ever since I was a kid, I've loved this guy. He is fantastic, and I think he he just left Impact not too long ago, and I think he is looking to make a return back to WWE and I think it's possible for him to, you know, come back, be in a little mid-major role on one of the brands, join the Royal Rumble and have a cool little a cool little move set in the Rumble and have some cool moments. I think that could be a potential thing. So RVD is on my list. Now here at the last five, guys, I think these last five are pretty damn big. These are the big names that I think are, you know, just like holy sh holy skeesh or ones that tie into good storyline. Next up, guys, we have one of my favorite wrestlers, Brad. We have Seth freaking Rock. Rollins. Seth Rollins has not been seen since Survivor Series. You guys know he sacrificed himself for Team SmackDown. He pretty much eliminated himself. And so Seth Rollins being a return in the Royal Rumble, I think is pretty much fact. I could even see him being number 30. I could see him being in the late 20s. Seth Rollins is going to be in this damn Royal Rumble, Brad. He's going to be in the Royal Rumble. It's been like seven, eight weeks, I think, since Becky gave birth to their child. And I think, I think it's time for him to return. The Royal Rumble is a perfect opportunity for him to get back in there. He may not, but that is one that I'm clinging to. I want to see my boy back in the ring. I think we're going to hear a big, loud burn it down, and he's going to come back out, not as the Messiah. The Messiah sacrificed himself at Survivor Series. I think that's the end of that gimmick, and I, and I think we're going to get back to those match of the year contenders. Seth Rollins coming out, burn it down at the Royal Rumble. Next up, guys, another one that I could see returning at the Royal Rumble. You guys know a little bit over a month ago, The Fiend was burned alive at TLC. You guys know Randy Orton set him on fire there at TLC. Hasn't been seen since I think The Fiend returns to the Royal Rumble. He may not. I honestly don't want him to, but I could see him being a potentially surprised return there at the Royal Rumble. And so I got you got to put The Fiend on your list, Brad. I mean, it's just a thing. Now, these last three are probably the biggest names of them all and the ones that I'd probably shit a brick if they came back right here in this capacity. Now, it ain't going to include CM Punk because he's, kind of he's kind of a wild card. Everybody kind of has them on the list. But the first one, guys, is going to be none other than The Beast, Brad. Brock Lesnar. Now, I've heard some, like, scary plans in the repertoire. Apparently, like, there's some scary plan or something, and I don't know what it has to do with it. It has nothing to do with Brock Lesnar, but I would guess if something had to do with a scary plan and there's potential that it may happen, you might see Brock Lesnar return at 30, win the damn Royal Rumble, Goldberg wins the WWE Championship, and then you have Goldberg versus Brock again at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. I don't want it. I don't want to see it. I would. I, I honestly wouldn't even care if Brock returned and then challenged Roman Reigns after winning the Rumble, but I don't want to see him and Goldberg again. I want to see a heel Roman versus a babyface Brock after winning the Rumble for the Universal title. Kind of intrigues me a little bit, Brad, not going to lie. I'd also like to see a babyface Seth versus a heel Roman at WrestleMania as well. That's a potential I'd like to see. Next up, guys, another big time name that we could see at the Rumble is going to be The Rock. Now, this ties into Roman Reigns as well with Jimmy Uso. This is that fantasy, you know, booking storyline that I was talking about. Maybe Jimmy comes back with The Rock or something like that. They're together and they're challenging Roman and Jay, and they're like, look, bro, this ain't right. You know, The Rock's the head of the table, and it kind of writes itself with the family bloodline and all that stuff. Maybe Jimmy double crosses Rock. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff that could go on there, but The Rock returning at the Rumble would be really huge, and I think a Rock-Roman match is what they really want, and it would start here at the Royal Rumble. I think that would be a fantastic match, but for my last men's Royal Rumble surprise entry that I'd love to see or that could potentially take place is going to be John Cena. My man coming out, number 30, John Cena haven't seen him since Wrestlemania. He could be in a heel capacity. Last time we saw him, he lost to the Fiend at Mania. Typically, guys flip-flop their character. They go from heels to face or face to heel when challenging the Fiend or losing to the Fiend or coming across with the Fiend. So I think John Cena being number 30, winning the Rumble as a heel, challenging Drew McIntyre, that would be beautiful. He could go on to Wrestlemania and win his 17th, or maybe he goes on to challenge Roman. I don't know. I'm just saying I think it would be absolutely brilliant, and uh, John Cena is another potential surprise entry I think we could see at the Rumble. Now, getting into the
into the Women's Rumble before we get out of here, guys. Starting out first for the Women's Rumble. I don't have as many, near as many for the women's as I do the men's because it's kind of difficult, I think, to, to call because there's so many different women that it could be and you know what I'm saying? The first one is going to be Naomi. Now, this one has to be right, right? I think she returned last year at the Rumble and she was around for a while and then she got injured and then she was drafted in October to Raw and we haven't really seen her since. So I think Naomi is a lock for the Women's Royal Rumble coming back in that capacity. Another one I would love to see would be Trish Stratus. Get some legends in there. They're not going to be able to fill up the damn Royal Rumble class. I think Trish Stratus is a perfect mixture in there. I think she's a perfect, I think she's a perfect selection for the Royal Rumble. I think she would be excellent. And then the last two women's entrants that I would love to see is going to be Rowdy Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch. Probably my two favorite women in the last 10 years of WWE. They have just been outstanding in their roles. I love Becky. I've loved Becky for a very long time now. When Ronda returned, I wasn't on board with it. She completely changed my mind. I thought she was absolutely fantastic. And I would love to see either of these women return, especially Becky Lynch at number 30 and winning the Royal Rumble. I just don't know if seven, you know, six to eight weeks is long enough for her to get back in ring shape and do it in a safe capacity and, you know, not hurt herself or anything like that. Also, being a full-time WWE competitor would be really hard to do when being a new mom. I have an 11th month. I have an 11 month old son. I know how difficult it is, especially on the mom. So doing that and everything like that would be a really challenging thing. Not that she couldn't do it, but I think it would definitely be a challenge. But Becky Lynch returning or Ronda would absolutely make me shit myself. Nonetheless, that is all my potential surprise entrance for this year's Royal Rumble. Oh yeah, I, I forgot Carlito. I think Carlito could be in the men's Rumble as well. If, if he pops out, guys, do not be totally shocked. I think tomorrow we're going to do my Royal Rumble predictions. You know, the surprise entrance that I think are going to happen. The winners of these Rumbles and the full match card and all of that good jazz. But anyways, guys, before we get out of here, let's get into our random shout out. And this shout out is going to go to Kenny Red Eye 29 who commented in our last video, MDT's three accessories. I asked them if I had my own figure made by Mattel, what three accessories would come with my figure? He says, trusty knife, trusty white hair dryer, and a line that is not to be crossed. Huge shout out to Kenny Red Eye 29 for those three accessories. I think those are really three great accessories. Trusty knife is a must. Gotta have the trusty knife. The scale would be a little bit challenging though. I think that'd be a really tiny accessory. Trusty white hair dryer would be badass, especially if it came with an outlet plug there that you can plug in somewhere, something. I don't know how you'd even do that. And then of course, you gotta have a line that is not to be crossed. I said that is not to be crossed. You crossed the line. I've been beat.